Hello and welcome to episode 134 of Tall Guy Talks Travel with Rick Doherty. Of course, I am your host, Rick Doherty. This episode is going live on August 24th, which happens to be my 10th anniversary. One decade ago today, my wife Courtney and I officially tied the knot. Well, I wanted to find some way to celebrate the fact on the podcast, and I remembered that our vacation to Walt Disney World back in 2018, back when we still lived in Arizona, was to celebrate our fifth anniversary. With that in mind, I thought I would bring Courtney on the show to talk about that trip. It will be a nice way to remember when we were experiencing the parks the same way that most of you experience them. It really puts things in perspective for us. Before we get started, there are obviously a million things I could say about how wonderful Courtney is in the real world. She's beautiful, brilliant, and she is the best cat parent in the history of time. On the show in particular, I think her contributions are a little underappreciated. It's been over three years since I tried to start a podcast. She's helped me research equipment. She's understood that this hobby would take me away from some everyday chores. She's done dining reviews, and she sat patiently while I recorded every little piece of food that we got at a theme park. You don't hear her on the show a lot because she's very, very busy with her real person job, but that doesn't mean that we could have had this thing last for over two and a half years without her. I have been in broadcasting for over 25 years, and Courtney understands how it is a passion that I need to work on in a variety of ways. Now, let's welcome Courtney back to the show. Thanks for being here, Court. It's great to be here, Rick. This episode of the podcast is going live on August 24th, and that just happens to be Courtney and my 10-year wedding anniversary, and I thought it would be fun to take our 10-year wedding anniversary and look back at our five-year anniversary where we decided we were still living in Arizona at the time that to celebrate five years of marriage, we would take a week-long vacation to Walt Disney World. So now going through the pictures of that vacation, it feels so much more special. And some of the things that I get to do now, and I don't maybe properly appreciate them, I go back and look at how much I was excited to experience them before. And then there are some things that now that I get to do them even more often, I have more of a love for them than maybe I did back when I was just a vacationer. So I think this is going to be fun to not only look at a different time in Walt Disney World. I mean, we're going to be talking about Fast Pass Plus. We're going to be talking about a whole bunch of different things that either don't exist anymore or are very, very different now. And I also try to remember that most people do experience the parks like we experienced them back in 2018 and not the way that I experience them now. So it's always good to keep that in mind and have that fresh outlook like somebody who was coming on a vacation. And I think the very first example of that is when we took Magical Express from Orlando International Airport, something that doesn't exist anymore. And a lot of people have great nostalgia for Magical Express. It was so stress-free. We got off the airplane. We went to our bus. It took us right to All-Star Movies, which is where we were staying. And to just have that excitement of knowing you were going to have the vacation... But all the worry was taken off your shoulders. Like you weren't thinking, how do I get from the airport to Disney? While this was really Courtney's first major experience with Walt Disney World, it was my first experience staying on property. We never had that kind of money when I was a kid and the value resorts didn't exist back then. So we were able to stay at a value resort and... Honestly, it made you feel like royalty. They picked you up at the airport. They dropped you off at your hotel. And now maybe we don't stay at the all-star resorts anymore. Maybe that's where we're a little spoiled. But here, I was so excited to know that I was one of those people who got the chance to stay on property at Walt Disney World. So, Courtney, why don't you talk a little bit about not 
from the perspective of somebody who's now stayed at deluxe resorts and moderate resorts. But talk about how you felt kind of checking in to all-star movies and seeing the theming and starting to get immersed in Disney for the first time in your life. Well, you're right. I really agree with you that it starts that immersion right away. As soon as you get on Magical Express, I mean, even the terminal and the airport to wait to get the bus, a Mickey figure is there and, you know, you start that excitement right away. On Magical Express, they're playing Disney songs or Disney cartoons and everything is immediately themed. You're immediately immersed. You're immediately starting to get very excited. And yes, sometimes you need to plan and we didn't necessarily plan everything to the nines to death, but this was nice that it's something that's included. You really don't have to think about it. It started things off on a great foot. And one of the reasons that we stayed at All-Star Movies instead of maybe staying at a moderate resort was because we knew we were going to be hitting the parks hard. Like, we were almost planning on rope drop to goodnight kiss every day, with some exceptions. So this first night that we were at the resorts, we decided that was going to be the only time we were going to take advantage of the food court. And we did know about a special item that you were able to get at the time, and that was a special poutine. And you know how it is when you're a vacationer and you know about those special things and you feel like a local because you get to say, I know about this thing. I'm a vegetarian. I don't eat meat. So I made Courtney get this (laughs) poutine because it was the way to start off the vacation feeling like we did all our research. We're not going to talk about the entire meal because it was just quick service food, but how was the poutine and did you enjoy that first step into Disney? Yeah, I think so. I mean, maybe the food wasn't the greatest because it is the food court food, but again, it was an enjoyable experience because it was something we knew about. It was something kind of special. Um, It was actually the little like viewfinder So there was a secret location, kind of. We had to flag down the cast member. They bring out a suitcase, and it was just the coolest thing. You know, you feel like you're, I don't know, in a movie or something. They bring out a little suitcase, and there's a viewfinder. And the menu for the special off-menu items is inside the viewfinder. So you click through, and you're not supposed to say, you know, aloud what you're looking at. But you tell the cast member, "Here's, here's the secret item that I want to get. So it was the poutine fries, having some gravy and cheese curds on just your regular standard fries, but it was a super fun experience. And then we had to go to bed super early because we were definitely rope dropping day number one, but this is going to make me sound like just an absolute lunatic because at the time I was running 11 miles a day. People who listen know that I do run Disney now and stuff like that, but you have no idea what my life was like in 2018. So I got up at three o'clock in the morning (laughs) and I ran first around the parking lot at All Star Movies and then down a trail all the way to Coronado Springs And then at Coronado Springs, this was still while they were constructing Grand Destino Tower. So every day I got to kind of watch the construction and the progress early in the morning. And then I'd turn around and run back. And then I'd probably have to run back again and then back again. I think the first couple days I put in about seven miles because this was vacation and I didn't have to go all out for it. But then it was time to wake up Courtney, get showered, and get to the theme parks. My tradition as a vacationer was always to rope drop Animal Kingdom. Obviously, when I was a little kid, Animal Kingdom didn't exist. But as an adult, I really fell in love with Animal Kingdom. And I wanted to rope drop it. I thought that Courtney seeing Kilimanjaro's safari, knowing how much she loves animals... And in my mind, that's just one of those examples of everything Disney does well, how they keep the animals away from each other, how they make sure you get good views of at least a few animals 
when you do it. And obviously, a hack that we talk about all the time is that Kilimanjaro Safari is best in the morning before it gets too hot for the animals. So that was what I wanted to rope drop on this vacation. It also was the 20th anniversary of Disney's Animal Kingdom, which is funny because I then ended up getting to be there on the day of the 25th anniversary earlier this year because now we live here, but I'm not going to get too much into what's happened since then. How did you feel this was as a way to kick off the vacation? It was a great suggestion by you, of course. <laughs> um, I remember us standing at the gates. They're kind of like big wooden fences in front of Africa. Um, you know, so we were able to come in, go through security, etc. And then they let you up to a certain point. And this is the action of the rope dropping of being some of the first guests in the park. And we were specifically some of the first guests to be entering into Africa. So that excitement of waiting there in front of those doors to open, that was really cool. And I love Kilimanjaro safaris. I think that that was really a great way to start off the day. And it's kind of crazy to look back on it and think about Fast Pass Plus because we made our Fast Passes for a little bit later in the day. So we got off Kilimanjaro Safari. That was our big e-ticket ride that we rope dropped so we didn't have to worry about getting a Fast Pass for it. And now it felt like we had all the time in the world because we didn't have to do anything until we had our fast pass for Navi River journey a little bit later. So we walked around the trails and saw some of the animals on Gorilla Falls Trail. Then we went over to the Maharaja Jungle Trek. By that point, Courtney was ready for a little breakfast. And what's a better Disney breakfast than getting a Mickey pretzel while I rode Expedition Everest? I know a lot of people know I'm not a big roller coaster fan, this was my first time ever trying Expedition Everest, and I loved it. It was such a great ride. I don't do it all that often now because sometimes going backwards, you know, on a random Tuesday, it might shake up your insides a little bit more than you want. But being on vacation, it was just such a great jolt to get the day started. And then we headed over to Pandora, the world of Avatar. This is one of those things. We're very spoiled now. We hardly ever go back there because now that there's not Fast Pass Plus anymore, we know that the lines for Navi River Journey and Avatar Flight of Passage are going to be extremely long. So we hardly ever ride these rides anymore. We don't usually get back to that section of the park. But to think about going back in time to the first time we saw those floating mountains and the first time we experienced Navi, which is a slow boat ride and not the most exciting ride in the world. But then when you see that animatronic shaman at the end and it's so impressive and every YouTube video you see or every picture you see or every time you hear somebody else talk about it, it never quite lives up to that first time that you see this amazing animatronic. And I think that was when Courtney really started to appreciate that Disney magic. I think so. Um, again, all of the theming, all of the just beautiful work that the Imagineers have put in to the parks, especially like a land like Pandora... It's the first time you see it. It's incredible. It's beautiful. It's exciting. It's fun. And the Navi River journey is a beautiful ride, a relaxing ride. And then, yes, seeing the shaman, which is some of the Disney Imagineering at its absolute finest. That's when things start to sink in like, wow, this is special. I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't know what our third Fast Pass Plus was for on that trip. I know. Our first one of the trip was Navi River Journey. And then I know after Navi, we headed over and did Dinosaur because I believe that was our next Fast Pass Plus. But we must have had three. So I don't remember what the other one was at all. 
I don't think it was a meet and greet. I don't think, I just don't know. I can remember what they were for Friday when we went back to Animal Kingdom and we'll get there later. But anyway, we went to Dino Land USA to ride Dinosaur, but we had a little bit of time before our Fast Pass. So we met Scrooge McDuck and Daisy Duck over in Dino Land. That was fun. Going to the parks with Courtney was actually the first time that I ever did character meet and greets. When I was a kid, characters roamed more around Walt Disney World. And then the other times I had gone as an adult, it just didn't seem like something that was that important for me. I was more ride, ride, ride. So this was fun to kind of get some of those pictures with some of those characters that I've always loved. And I don't like to say acting like a kid because I don't think you're acting like a kid. You're just enjoying the parks in a different way. But having that sort of childhood innocence of seeing a character going up, getting a picture, trying to find ways to communicate, even though Scrooge McDuck isn't talking to you. All of that was really fun. Then obviously Dinosaur is an amazing ride. And after we rode Dinosaur, that was when we decided it was time to head over to Magic Kingdom because on your first day of a vacation, you have to see the castle. I think it's a rule written somewhere in some rule book. And this was Courtney's first experience heading over to Magic Kingdom right when we got there and walked on Main Street USA for the first time. Right as we entered, the Dapper Dans were performing and there was Cinderella Castle at the end of Main Street. What was it like preparing for this vacation for, I think we were planning it for like, a year and a half, watching vlogs of other people doing this, seeing pictures, hearing people talk about it, and then finally you're there after all of this. And it must have just been mind-blowing. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely it. You get excited. You definitely, you know, start planning, preparing, looking at videos, looking at pictures, um, you know, looking at the map, thinking about what rides you want to do, those kinds of things. Um, and then there's just nothing, nothing really like being there in person. It's a lot of emotions. It's just the most exhilarating, fun thing in the world. And when you see the castle and you are very emotional, I mean, I know I cried, so <laughs> it was great. And then just the timing of the Dapper Dans, they're fantastic. It was a definitely a great, great way to start Magic Kingdom. And Courtney was hungry, and we made a huge mistake. When you're actually hungry for food, we did a rookie Disney mistake here, and we went to the Starbucks location on Main Street because we knew they had a special snow white inspired apple cupcake and the first couple bites of this were really really good but then it became one of those disney treats that is just so sweet and it was just almost gross and i don't think we finished it but that was your first lesson in trying to find food at disney that's actually substantial Right. And I know part of our planning the vacation was, you know, trying to be smart. We had snacks in our, um, I think we were allowed to bring like maybe some granola bars. We had snacks back at our hotel, tried to have a little breakfast, you know, at the hotel. But you're still, of course, always hungry. And, you know, we thought, oh, well, we're not going to really waste our money here and there. But yes, there are some nice things we want to try. And okay, yep, sometimes the Disney food is, you know, you're like, all right, I'm going to shell out the money for this. It's, ex you know, I'm really excited to try it. It looks so good. And after a few bites, eh, it's just not worth it. Or it's like, oh, it's going to really make me sick. So I need to stop eating it. But you have that initial enjoyment and, you know, you kind of live and learn sometimes. When I was a kid, just the nature of being a kid, when we would go to Walt Disney World, it was always during the summer. It was in the highest volume time for vacationers. So the parks were always packed. 
I remember waiting for like three or four showings of the Enchanted Tiki Room before they let us in to see it. Like, I remember lines from when I was a kid that were just insane. So I overplanned thinking it was going to take us way too much time to do a lot of these things. But we had already used our first three fast passes. So when we got to Magic Kingdom, we could make some for that park. We were immediately able to snag one for Pirates of the Caribbean. What a great first ride at Magic Kingdom for Courtney. First of all, you get out of the heat, even when you're in the queue. Yes, a shorter queue with Fast Pass Plus, but still a queue. That's air conditioned, and then you get into that nice dark water ride. You let that pirate's water smell hit you. And that was how she got to experience Magic Kingdom for the first time. After that, I wanted to make sure everybody knows my favorite Disney princess, my favorite Disney character is Merida, and she had that meet and greet right next to the castle. I had a Dunbrock archery shirt that I had gotten off of Etsy. So I had that in a plastic bag in our park bag, which reminds me, now I remember the other fast pass was for Cali River Rapids. That's why we had everything in plastic. Anyway, (laughs) so we met Merida. Then, boom, boom, boom. We hit a bunch of stuff before Happily Ever After. We knew we wanted to be in place for Happily Ever After, but we hit things like Carousel of Progress, It's a Small World, and we even got to do Haunted Mansion, and then we headed to Main Street, USA. We were a little further back because we wanted to make sure we could get out of there quickly because, like I had said, I'd been up since 3 o'clock in the morning, Courtney was getting pretty tired. This was her first day, and we knew we had another early morning the next day. So we caught happily ever after, and then boom, we were out of there. We sort of cheated a little bit to get an Uber from the contemporary back to all-star movies. And I would say very, very successful first day. Oh, of course. And, you know, like we said, I remember going once or twice as a very small child so to me everything felt brand new and there were some things that were brand new that maybe weren't there years ago um so as basically a first time and a first time as an adult I mean nothing can beat it Disney does everything so well I think our planning definitely came to our advantage and everything coalesced and it was a great day of course Then the next morning, it was a Tuesday, and after another 3 a.m. wake-up call and another seven miles running around parking lots and different paths throughout Walt Disney World, we were hitting Epcot. We wanted to rope drop Soren because from what I had remembered, that was like the hardest fast pass to get. Now, Frozen Ever After existed now, and there were some other things, and maybe Soren wasn't quite as popular but we rope drop Soren. Then we hit up journey into imagination with figment because it was right there. And we thought we could just get it out of the way, but then we wanted to head over to Hollywood studios. This was before you had to wait until two o'clock in the afternoon to park hop. So we headed over to Hollywood studios because Courtney really wanted to see that beauty and the beast show. By the time we got over there, we had to wait for the next showing. So we did Muppets Vision 3D and then just kind of stumbled onto the lounge at the Hollywood Brown Derby where we got that famous Cobb salad for the first time. Now that's one of our favorite restaurants in the world. Yeah. Now I will say we started to have a little bit of a hiccup because the buses are, you know, not always the most predictable So we were really worried about getting over to Hollywood Studios in time. It ended up working out. And, you know, going to Brown Derby Lounge was great. And yes, we will always remember that first time. We love going back there now. And the Beauty and the Beast show, I absolutely adored and loved. And maybe it's outdated and maybe it's, you know, in need of a little something refreshed or something. Maybe it's a little uh, cheesy, But I absolutely loved it seeing the first time. Love Beauty and the Beast. Love the Broadway style 
show that they are going for. So we had a good time. And I know what you're thinking. Well, why didn't you just take the Disney Skyliner? But that didn't exist yet. And actually, after we saw the Beauty and the Beast show, it started to pour. And we were worried about getting another bus over to Epcot. And they had shut down the friendship boats because of the rain. So we had to get back to Epcot for a Via Napoli reservation. And we walked, which isn't all that bad now. But back then, we had to walk around all of the Disney Skyliner construction and then walk to Epcot. And it was maybe the first negative experience of the vacation. But by the time we got to Via Napoli, we sat down. We had a big pizza with cheese and extra mushrooms. And it was really good. And I think that sort of calmed everything down. Epcot that night was incredible when I had suggested to Courtney that we do a Walt Disney World vacation the very first thing she said to me was will I be able to meet Snow White so after Via Napoli the first thing I said was I gotta get you to the Snow White meet and greet in Germany we met Snow White we met Mulan we met Belle we met Anna and Elsa and then we had our fast pass for Frozen Ever After, which Courtney still to this day loves. And every time she gets an opportunity to ride it, I think it almost feels like that first time for her. And then we finished at Lotus Cafe, the quick service location in China, because we had burned all of those calories that we had gotten from Hollywood Brown Derby and Via Napoli. But how was that late night at Epcot. So Epcot is phenomenal. If you love it, you love it. If you don't quite get it, then I guess you don't quite get it and that's okay. But it's, I think, my favorite park now. Um, it's, of course, hard to outdo Magic Kingdom. Magic Kingdom is very quintessential Disney and will always be, you know, all of the things that we know and love with Fantasyland, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Epcot is really cool. It's a little bit educational, of course, the edutainment, as I know Rick loves that term. The way, again, the Disney imagineering, the artistry, the details, the love, care, attention, and smart way that Disney does things, that these pavilions that represent each country are just fantastic. So getting to see that was a lot of fun. And the characters, I didn't quite realize how much I would love meeting characters. Of course, each one is a little different because you know their personality, their story, you know, their unique individual situation. And meeting face characters is a little different than meeting um, the other characters, um, like a Mickey, Minnie, who you can't see their face. So each one is a special interaction. And that is something I came to really love. I feel like you're using your imagination a little bit. It feels special to me. Um, getting a hug from a favorite character or just getting to talk to them is just something for your spirit and your soul that really makes it enjoyable. All of the rides were great, experiencing them for the first time. I remember loving Soren and, of course, Frozen because I like that movie. I like those characters and that storyline. And Disney, again, just executes things very, very well. And to remember all the things that we did on the vacation, I'm going through some of our pictures. And the Grease booth that year for the Food and Wine Festival, I also stopped there and got a plant-based Greek nacho. Disney, bring this back, okay? This was so good. It was, I guess, a plant-based imitation gyro meat that was on top of pita bread chips. There was some tzatziki. I think it was a plant-based tzatziki. This was so good, and it was such a great vegan and vegetarian option for food and wine. I don't know why you got rid of that option, but <laughs> bring it back sometime. I had absolutely no idea this was going to be a two-episode conversation, Courtney. We have already made it 
through the first two days, but I don't think we have enough time to go through the last three days of the vacation. So we're going to continue this, but it's probably not going to be for another month that we're going to have a chance because I have a lot of topics planned throughout September. So just be patient, but we'll come back to this sometime in October, and we are going to talk about this vacation because I'm having so much fun reminiscing on the last time I was a vacationer at Walt Disney World and remembering how important everything felt, like you had to do Pirates every time you were in Magic Kingdom because you didn't know when you were going to get to do Pirates the next time. You had to do Haunted Mansion. So we'll continue this in a couple weeks. Happy anniversary, Courtney, and thanks for being on the show. Thank you. Happy anniversary. Thank you for having me. This has been episode 134 of Tall Guy Talks Travel with Rick Doherty. If you're enjoying this on YouTube, please like, comment, and subscribe. We'll be spending some of the anniversary celebration at Walt Disney World and Universal Orlando Resort. And I think we may have some videos that you will enjoy from the experience. There are a couple of dining reviews in particular that are pretty exciting. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss anything. We'll be back next Thursday when I'm joined by my good friend Marissa from Chicago. The two of us are going to do a little armchair Imagineering by addressing some things that will be changing or need to change at Walt Disney World and what we would do to change them. Until then, have a great week.